Low glycine equals poor sleep. What is the dosage you should take? What are some of the benefits? And what is the mechanism of how glycine impacts sleep? So let's get right into this one. Dosage, three grams, 30 minutes to 60 minutes before bed. What are the benefits? You have a faster sleep onset. You have increased amount of sleep while in bed, meaning you might be in bed for eight or nine hours, but you get a better quality and duration of sleep while you're in bed. Earlier onset of slow wave sleep, basically deeper sleep. The onset is quicker. Less daytime fatigue and increased cognitive function. Obviously, if you're getting better sleep, you're going to have better energy during the day, as well as better focus and cognition. Another benefit is it supports muscle atonia during REM sleep. Muscle atonia basically means relaxation of the muscle or non-movement of muscle, okay? It impacts what we call neural peptides and it helps with the circadian rhythm, okay? <clears throat> basically, it makes it more uh, natural in terms of your circadian rhythm. Glycine is absorbed in the small intestine and crosses the blood-brain barrier with some transport, okay? Glycine is also important for formation of glutathione. I have a separate video on that. But let's get into the mechanism of how glycine impacts sleep. And so, let's look at the mechanism. Glycine activates NMDA receptors in the suprachasmatic nucleus, short is SCM. SEM is the master circadian clock. It regulates that sleep cycle, okay? Between light shining in your eyes and darkness, it, it coordinates the sleep pattern. Here's a rudimentary drawing. Here are your eyes over here. So sunlight or darkness will shine here and goes into the optic nerves. And there's a place where it crosses and that is called the optic chiasm. And the suprachiasmatic nucleus is just above that and right behind it. And so it regulates your circadian rhythm. The suprachiasmatic nucleus increases skin blood flow when it's activated. So it's active, activated by glycine. And when it's activated, the blood flow goes to the skin basically helps to dissipate heat from your body or your core. Increases skin blood flow, decreases core body temperature, right? In order to get into a deep sleep, your core temperature needs to drop. It amplifies the natural circadian rhythm. So the suprachiasmatic nucleus stimulates the release of what we call neuropeptides. A, V, P, and V, I, P. And that also helps regulate the internal clock. So there's multiple factors going on when you use glycine to activate the NMD receptors of the suprachiasmatic nucleus. When glycine binds to the NMDA receptor, it increases cerebral blood flow also, blood flow to the brain, and also impacts the autonomic output. Autonomic output is basically your fight or flight, rest and relaxation. So autonomics, things that happen automatically. So if it impacts the autonomic system, it also increases peripheral vasodilation, which ties into increased skin blood flow and decreasing core body temperature, right? So let's recap this real quick. Glycine and glutamate impact NMDA receptors in the suprachiasmatic nucleus. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is responsible for increasing blood flow to the skin, decreasing core temperature, and improving your natural circadian rhythm. Okay, so that's how it impacts your sleep pattern. Now, glycine has gained a lot of traction with, you know, so-called anti-aging and so forth. There are many factors to how glycine will work with that. 
I do have another video called Gly Knack, Glycine Plus Knack, um, which explains all of that. So I'll link that in the description below. So let's get into some of the dosaging. I told you the studies have shown three grams of glycine can impact the brain 30 minutes to 60 minutes before sleep. RDA recommendation for magnesium or elemental magnesium is between 310 and 420, depending if you're male, female, breastfeeding, etc. Okay, so that is your RDA recommendation. Now, not everyone gets 310 to 420. Oftentimes it's, you know, underdosed. So you can probably add in additional glycine and magnesium to your supplementation. So the reason I'm talking about Magnesium here is because magnesium glycinate, glycinate. So you have two parts glycinate, one part magnesium. When you take magnesium glycinate, 80 to 86% of it is actually glycine, and the other portion is a uh, elemental magnesium. Okay. So when you take 400 milligrams of magnesium glycinate you're getting approximately 60 milligrams of elemental magnesium. If you get 1,200 milligrams of magnesium glycinate, you're getting approximately 180 milligrams of elemental magnesium. Now, remember you have RDA, you have a certain amount that you take in every day, so you don't need to take 500 or 1,000 milligrams of elemental magnesium. You need to take in a smaller dose to kind of supplement this. Now, everyone has a different threshold for how much magnesium they can take. So you have to be careful. If you're taking a lot of medications, talk to your doctor about it. But you can get magnesium and glycinate together, which would impact sleep in the long run. So oftentimes I say, you don't need to take melatonin. Take magnesium glycinate first. Okay, See if that impacts your sleep. Then maybe take magnesium glycinate, put a little more uh, glycinate in there and see if it impacts sleep even better before you start melatonin. The good thing is that melatonin is not impacted by the use of glycine. Okay? So if you can calculate this out a little bit, there's no exact number for you know, each individual and body weight, etc. You got to look at your diet. Am I getting magnesium rich foods? And then supplement accordingly to get the most impact on your sleep. Okay. My name is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.